Welcome to the Casual Camping Podcast, your home for the best camping discussion both in and out of the field. Here are your hosts, Tim and Aid. Welcome to this week's episode of Casual Camping Podcast. I am Tim. And I'm Aid. Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, thanks for lending in its, your ears. And um, yeah, what a weekend we've had, Tim. What a weekend. Blooming heck. I mean, we're, we're a couple of days after it now. And uh, I have to say, I am... Um, I'm still feeling the buzz. I'm I'm still still feeling the buzz of the Bushcraft show. Uh yeah, you know, I, I think the true buzz of something like that is that I've gone and searched for tickets for next year. Because <laughs> I was like <laughs> that was awesome. That and was that, awesome. And that's the end of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> oh, oh, it, it was absolutely cracking and uh we got some great weather but what a location uh it Stunning. was absolutely yeah what was the hall called uh stanford hall stanford hall and um it was absolutely so you know if if you know anyone in in the uk or if you've been to the uk we have big stately homes big massive old manor houses with huge grounds with uh, you know large mature oak trees and lakes and rivers and swans and geese and, and all sorts of stuff um if you if you've if you're not from the uk you've not been to the uk if you watch things like downton abbey um things like that it it's like that it's yeah. it's like that so you get yeah. to go camping Right in front of Downton Abbey, and uh, and it, it <laughs> yeah, was like the bushcraft that. show is nothing to do with Downton Abbey. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> not at all. But I'm just setting the scene for our listeners who might might be you know in other yeah. parts of the world. It's um, there was a lot of blue sky. Yeah. We camped near the lake. There was cygnets and swans on the lake. Um. What a beautiful, beautiful part of Middle England uh, to host a show like that. Yeah, there was swallows dive bombing. There was uh, there was geese uh, flying in. It it was it was just there were swans literally walking through the campsite. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. It, it it was just you know ideal, absolutely ideal, and. Um, and yeah, the weather, the weather was, um, you know, I've gone back to work and ever and said, oh, you know, I've, I've been camping for the weekend and everybody's kind of gone, oh God, oh, I bet that was horrible. I think we must have had the nice bit of England because we got yeah. there on the Friday. It was, it was dry and sunny setting up. It was dry overnight. Saturday was scorching and I, yeah. I got a little bit burnt to be honest, because I wasn't expecting it to be as nice. It did rain really heavy right through the night, Saturday to Sunday. And Sunday we did have some showers, but they only lasted a few minutes. And then it and was then warm. It was so bright, it then it was really, bright and sunny in between. Yeah, really, really brightened up. Um, yeah. And, yeah, just cracking. And and I guess that, for me, um, obviously, I'm out camping. It's on a weekend. What's not to like? We, we love uh, uh, camping yes. and stuff. Uh, but then the fact of, uh, for me, you know, people make the places that you go. I've been to festivals before. I don't think I've ever been to something uh, so on my level, I think, um, yeah. that, you know, there was millions of knife stalls. There was loads <laughs> of kids. <laughs> there was loads of stuff to sort of inquire about. but. There was, there was so many interesting talks. There were so many interesting things to learn. Bits that I, you know, I think people that know me, uh, I mean, uh, the name that was uh, thrown about was uh, Princess Pancake Balls. Uh, thanks, Richard. Shout out to you. 
Um, <laughs> so, so I do like the finer things in life, uh, especially when in camping. But actually, it's really triggered an awful lot of other things that I've come away from going, yeah, actually, why am I not taking more bushcraft into my normal... Mm. everyday kind of thing you know i i, I do like to uh, uh uh fires and bits and pieces like that why why aren't i feathering uh, uh a stick to make my fire go yeah, yeah it was just yeah. just brilliant i mean yeah come on you're, you're never going to put that that blowtorch down but <laughs> <laughs> i am um, i don't mind holding my hand up and saying i was really nervous last week on the run-up to it I um I was a bit stressed. I uh I wasn't sure what what we were what we were going to be doing. I wasn't really sure what I was going to find. I like to burn stuff. I like to have a knife. I um but I don't know how to forage. I don't know how to do all those 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 what we would think as bushcraft stroke survival type type skills. And I thought, you know, a massive amount of imposter syndrome was kind of coming coming over me last week, and I I don't like I say I don't mind holding my hand up and saying I was I was really quite stressed about it. It um and uh, and my other half kind of had to have a bit of a chat to me and say, you "Need to calm your shit down. It's just a weekend away where you're camping yeah, and you're going to burn stuff." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, I know, but you know, everyone that's going to be there is going to know more than me, and I'm just going to look like a complete idiot." And yes, everybody there did know more than me. There, there was ten year old girls that knew more than you, Tim. <laughs> there was. That were there tooled was. to the there nines. Was. They were yeah. tooled up. <laughs> it's an open carry kind of thing. They were tooled up. They were bow drilling. And it was like and getting embers. And and but yeah. But I um yes, everybody there knew more than me. What was lovely is nobody made you feel like an idiot. Actually, I've no. I've never been to such a well, as you as you put it where people are on your level. I've never been to such a chilled out kind of yeah. event where genuinely people are incredibly chatty, really open about their background and what they do, and just actually want to share the joy in in being able to look at nature and see see how they can use it. You know, yeah. what's that plant do? What does that what can they do with that bit of wood? You know, and 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 just openly in a really lovely kind of yeah, I'll show you that. It's um, it was yeah. fab. I well, um, I, I think I think, it. and I, there was many many highlights. But I think waking up on the first morning to glorious sunshine, looking out across the lake, getting a coffee on and having something. But then the guys camped next to us, Curtis. Uh, came and showed us how to um, do do some fire lighting. Yeah, and Kurt, Curtis you've got and Rich. A fire, yeah, and Rich. Sorry, Rich. Um, but you have a fire piston that mm. you've never been able to use. Um, checking out obviously, people. Obviously, Search it's the fire, fire piston. piston's fault. It's a fire yeah, piston's yeah, fault. It it's not me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but similarly, I had a uh, flint and steel, which uh, you bought me years ago, which mm. I... Of cacandied, got a few sparks off, but never really done it. And uh, isn't it really surprising how easy they made it feel? I, I was they're, like, I mean, they oh. they super skilled guys, but how how absolutely lovely! They just kind of came over and just went, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the first thing they did, and and I might sound really stupid to some of our listeners. I might sound like a magician to to some. They um uh, they they wanted like a a fire steel like a a ferro rod, so I got my my fire wizard out and and they went have you ever actually relit the fire on a morning with mm. it and I went oh well sometimes there's an ember there and I can get it going and they went no 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 just the, like the cold charcoal you know the cold ember the cold wood and it's like uh, I didn't know you could do that and they just literally started sparking away. And within seconds, they it had re-embered, and then we put a feather stick on it, and there was a fire. And I was just like, okay, you guys are really smart. But they were really not intimidated with it at all. They were just really yeah. cool guys who were obviously quite excited to show two guys how to do stuff. And they, um, yeah. the Rich Rich was playing away with my, my fire piston, which has probably been put away a bit too long because we, we couldn't get it get it working but he um 
he does know how to use that and kind of talk me through it all. Yeah. And at the same time, Curtis was was getting you to do um, play around with your flint. It's yeah. just cool as what what uh, an amazing. And I think that kind of almost represents the the show, not in its entirety, but the. Friendliness, like the, ethos, the openness, and the fact of uh, skill sharing. So, you know, and I, I think whether you want to know a great deal about bushcraft, uh, I think if you're out in nature and you like to be out in nature, um, it's nice to have some of those things. Yeah, and bush, know, bushcraft, it's... what I've learned is bushcraft isn't, it's it's not it's not beardy bushcrafters and, 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 earth mothers and you know it is those things but it but it isn't something that isn't you know it's much broader than that you know it it, it isn't it isn't just about having a knife and mm-hmm. and cutting some stuff up or going hunting or building shelters actually bushcraft you know if you just want to look at foraging and 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 plants and plant law then you can just you can just you can go off for for years down down that line if you want to go tracking and you want to think about stuff like that you know to to help protect you know from poachers and things like that it's um there's people doing lo- loads of stuff and becoming experts in that it's um i mean it's so so, so, much, in- so much broader than i i i really appreciated that it is yeah yeah and i, I think that's the thing um the the central stage of which everything pivots around really there was some interesting talks uh, mm. all the way through that so uh they had the maasai visiting from kenya um, right uh we had a a, a talk uh, from them uh, a bit of explanation about their dancing uh, more about their culture and keeping that mm. alive, and also the the show's charity work in order uh, helping those with much needed funds. They had a stall there selling things. It was intricate, beautiful stuff, uh, as well as the auction that raised funds. You know, there's some real generosity going on there from stall holders and the mm. community that had come to just see the show. That you know, dig deep. I thought it was you know just. All of those things, and and cause I like, and because I like because I like gear. There was a full raven shop, Tim. There was a full raven shop. <laughs> <laughs> he said, walking into it, dressed head to toe in full raven already. <laughs> I'm the only one that that hasn't got. Well, I've got a t-shirt and a fleece. I really need some full raven trousers. Uh... It's um if you don't know Fall Raven, go and have a look uh, at Fall Raven stuff because some um, yeah. really quality Scandinavian um outdoor gear. Mm. Um yeah, that that was really nice to have a wander around. It's um and how many knife shops were there? So so you, you could do a whole day of retailing, which we did. Which uh, we did. Of, we did two days ev- of retailing, quite frankly. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody is showing you this the things that they've made from steels, from axes, uh, very much, you know, uh, kind of local industry type stuff. Uh, not yeah. too many things were were over commercial. There's people around the world. Um, it just absolutely fantastic, wasn't it? It really, it really was. It really was. Loads of one man band. I've made this stuff in my workshop, and I've come to the show, and I'm selling it. And and we've talked before that, that that's that's the kind of stuff that that we really like to promote because it every single one of those purchases is a massive deal to those people. Mm. You know, it it it's it makes a big difference to them. So so it's great when actually you can go to shows like this and and yes, it, you don't have to spend. There was no pressure to spend. Um, they were happy to show you stuff and talk about stuff. You know, yeah, they they want to sell it, but actually they're really just quite happy to to talk you through their journey of how they've got to where they are. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, but actually if you do go and buy something, it's, it's really quite lovely to know that, uh, you know, all of that money's going in their pocket. It's going, it's going to them. And, um, and that's, you know, where we like to shout out the little guy. It's, um, who's just working really hard to make really quality stuff. And there was a shed load of quality stuff there yeah. and not, yeah. not just knives. There was, there was, um, 
there was there was people there were stalls from all over the world from like Spain and Italy and and selling selling sort of canvas tarps and canvas tents sort of like oiled canvas lavoos um just you know and and on top of that a load of second hand stuff as well so so army surplus and yeah. um uh, one of my favorite stalls was the uh, the old tool stall right down in the corner I went in there a couple of times. Uh, I think I bought three things out of that stall. Something each time I went in, and a lovely old couple in there who uh, who are retiring in a couple of months' time and not doing any more shows, and uh, and they 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 were just really, really lovely, really lovely. But um, just yeah. fab, fab, yeah. And cheap beer. Didn't you find the beer was cheap? Uh, yes, um... <laughs> for a, for a festival. For a festival. That was, that was cheap beer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, great food. Uh, you know, the entirety of things to do, things to keep entertained. That mm. first night, you and I just wandered around the stalls. Uh, yeah. Sorry, the, the campsite. We wanted to mm. see people's setups. Uh, we're interested in gear, and there were some great setups. Should uh, we? Um, we oh, yeah, um, it's a nice lead in for uh, yeah. a bit of audio we did, eh? We uh, we recorded something after after the first night. Um, so uh, from from the Friday to the to the uh, over the overnight on the Friday, we recorded something on the Saturday morning. Let's uh, let's cut away to some audio. Hello, and we're recording this live at the Bushcraft Show. So first evening down, Tim. How do you find it? super super chilled out group of people yeah. i um we we have i don't know you've been to a lot of a lot of festivals i've been to a few festivals we've been to a lot of campsites i don't think i've come across a friendlier bunch of people we have talked to so many people yeah yeah i think that's the overarching uh, impression i've got is Never have I been at uh, any festivals where people just, even if you're in the close proximity, come over and start chatting to you. Yeah. And we're talking about very similar things. So, you know, setups, how people are doing it, what they're doing. Um, and yeah, just so friendly. So, so friendly. I mean, we, we, we set up and stuff yesterday and we went for a wander around to, as you do, to, have a bit of a look to see who's got who's got some nice gear and the amount of people that that just we were only walking past the tents and they just walked over and it was just like you're all right what are you doing are you here you know have you been here before and and just really really yeah. really lovely really lovely and there's a load of people that actually um said that they came for a day last year or a few years ago and they've come for a weekend uh this time and i think yeah, that's just such a, and my impression of what I've seen, I, I really understand why people go, oh, this is so, so good. Mm. I'm coming back for a longer period next yeah. time. So, And there, there were literally several people who said that to us yesterday, which, um, which was really cool, really yeah. cool. And although um, we're in the, the VIP camping, there is a lot of space. Um, the other camping looks brilliant. There's still a lot of space between. Nobody seems to be really hemmed in. Uh, but... Ton tons of space. Yeah. You know, we had a wander around the, the camping field yesterday. There's another lake over there, so there's loads of people camped around the lake, and um, and and some massive setups over there. It's um, so yeah, we're we are VIP glamping. It, it does feel very much VIP as well. So <laughs> yes. Um, and yeah, just seeing loads of different setups, loads of different pitches, different tents, things that we've not seen before, things that we have seen before, but everybody's got their own take on what they have done. So yeah, ideal for you and me, I think. Oh, ideal for yeah. anybody, really. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm chuffed to bits with the, the new bell tent. Um, there are a lot of bell tents here. Uh, one or two with a stove in, but not many. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm I'm stepping up the game for a lot of people here. Yeah. I uh, and your your setup just looks pretty fantastic. 
Absolutely fantastic. Well, thank you. I think the other thing, if anybody's nervous about um, bushcraft being the in the title, is that what it is? You know, there are people with some, and I, I would say, and I don't mean this horribly, some basic setups. They're just in a tent. It's the environment that they've come for. Mm. They want to be uh, in that. So, you know, it, it feels really inclusive for a- anybody and everybody. Yeah, yeah, it it really does. There's there's people in lavoos. There's people in li- little lean to tops. Um, there's some people in in some real micro hiking tents. But then there's some people with some serious big setups, uh, you know, off Land Rovers and all sorts of stuff. It's um, the, there's literally everything here. Yeah, yeah it's uh, there's a load of roof tents. It's uh, it's cracking. Yeah. We uh, there was some nice live acoustic live music last night. Um, we uh, we there was a nice talk last night uh, about primitive skills, and hopefully we're going to go over and, and chat to those people today or tomorrow and uh and we're about to go and uh and hear what what the maasai have to say which is just cool as uh, it's just amazing so yeah just being in this environment and although you mentioned like you know some really good setup some lovely hiking tents and the bigger things i'm also looking at one of the cheapest tents that you can get out there and a beach shelter that is put together so you know that it doesn't matter you know how into bushcraft the environment i think is what they're creating yeah. and yeah that is lovely um it's certainly lovely for me yeah so cool fab well we'll uh, we'll speak to you later Bye. i suppose i suppose something else to talk about was um you know you said there was like 10 year old girls who knew more than me which there were <laughs> Which the one? I, which the I wasn't trying to be insulting, was. but I do hear it now. <laughs> <laughs> you never have to try too hard to be insulting to me, Eddie. <laughs> it comes so naturally. <laughs> the older brother rules, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you remember the time you tied me up in a hose pipe and left me in the garden? And mum came out instead of untying me, she took pictures. <laughs> I'm not scarred, honest. <laughs> it sounds like a, we were so poor kind of story. <laughs> yeah. We were living in middle of road. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were lucky to have a road. We just had a path. <laughs> we were so poor, we had to live on gravel. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry. Oh, sidetracked. Um, yeah, there were kids that knew more than me. There was tons of kids there and tons of stuff to do for kids. Well, there was a whole kids zone up in the woods mm. and stuff, and uh, and uh, and a massive um, tree climbing, <laughs> like climbing yeah. to the top of a huge big oak tree, and then coming down on like a roped um, zip wire basket, coming down yeah. it again. It's um. All very safe, you know, very, very incredibly well managed, incredibly well managed, loads of health and safety, nothing, uh, nothing at all, you know. Well, I, I, I was going to say not risky, but obviously kids need a bit of risk in their lives. It's mm. um, So doing stuff like that in a controlled environment means it's kind of controlled risk. And um, and it was very much a controlled environment. I um, Yeah. Did you see the archery and uh, axe throwing? Yeah. Yeah. There was the water place as well. That was really popular with families. Um, And uh, and the laser laser quest, which we talked about on Tentertainment, uh, they had the lasers, (laughs) which was awesome. (laughs) That was truly awesome. And, yeah, just, yeah, seeing people, like, running around. I was like, us when we were kids. Really, really loved that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we we even took a trip up to. So you you've got the kind of the standard camping, you've got the quiet camping, you've got the VIP camping, um, and the standard camping uh, you could find sort of quite nice space, but there was more people in there than anywhere else. The quiet mm. camping was really spacious and quiet. Yeah, and the VIP camping uh, was probably a little bit more um, 
fuller than the quiet camping, but uh, what a lovely area and uh, environment that was um, yeah, yeah. And, and everything that comes with it. Um, and then there was the people in the woods. So those happy band of merry men and women who decided to pitch up tarps or the like uh, mm-hmm. and be under trees. And uh, it was it was like a different environment. It was like you crossed over in somewhere else, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it it literally was like it because there were there were fires in there, so there was a little bit of smoke drifting drifting through, and um, and it was very quiet and very still. Nobody was really talking. You could hear the 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 band. We, you know, we went through there on the on the Saturday night, and um, and there were, you could hear sort of the band playing from from the main stage. But um, yeah, it was it was like you'd walked into you know. Uh, I don't want to say Narnia, but it, it was it was like it was just a bit a bit ethereal, bit a bit kind of you know yeah. woodland loveliness, and uh, and there was a lot of people in there. There was, but they you know they weren't on top of each other. There there was a lot of space in there because it was a woodland, and um, there were tarps, there were hammocks, there were um, the the most interesting one I saw was somebody who was doing a hot bed. Who had um, clearly dug out a trench, like a long trench, and had then mm. had a fire going in that trench, which they would then backfilled with earth, and it was still smoking a bit. So they'd only, you know, not recently backfilled it. That fire will then die down, and at night time, because this was early evening, at night time that will still be really warm, and they'll just lie and sleep directly on that bed, and it'll be yeah. a hot bed, and they'll be really warm all night. And um, and it's that's stuff the, like that's the thought, isn't it? I mean, I've only that's, seen yeah. that on Jeremiah Johnson, the yeah. uh, Robert Redford film from the seventies. Um, previously, it's normally, so it's normally like, me with the uh, the the ancient uh, TV yeah. and movie references. That's but, one, of, uh, one of my favourite films. Is yeah, that? yeah, I'm mine, I'm mine. But that but, that's the kind of thing I really wanted to see at the Bushcraft yeah. Show. I wanted to see people really showing their their skills and um and actually so because like you say I've, I've seen it on on a couple of movies i've seen it on a couple of documentaries on tv but to see actually people go into a show like this and actually no i'm i'm gonna do that at the bushcraft show was really really fantastic and it and it was you know there's a nice path running through the woods it was absolutely fine to just kind of walk through and and have a look you know we took a few photographs and things all you know, we've already put a few photographs and short reels up onto Instagram and Facebook. I'm in the middle of editing a monster long video to go up onto our YouTube. I'm probably halfway through at the moment. It's about eleven, twelve minutes. Um, but we'll we'll put a all of our footage and all of our photos and everything up onto onto YouTube and we'll stick a link on the socials when they uh, have a look because the some of the stuff from in the woods was just really, really cool. Really cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, and I, I think going from a quite busy uh, main site into the camping area because you had to walk through the main camping in order to get to the into the woodland, mm. and the difference of a noisy camp into quite peaceful birds, bird mm. song, and just that enclosedness because it was quite a dense wood as well so yeah uh, and i think that's the bit it just felt so different from we're at a festival and look um Mm -hmm. and there's just people hunkered down some on the ground some in um uh i was gonna say swags but not swags um the hanging things in the trees that's the The hanging the hanging things the hanging tents what are those? Tents. There was people in the hanging tents See, from the trees. I told you I know me bushcraft. <laughs> <laughs> a ten-year-old girl would have known it was called a hammock. <laughs> Can't get me words out, Tim. Can't get me words out. <laughs> oh man, it's um, I don't know. I I just I I just thought it was an absolute cracking thing from start to finish, and really chilled out. Really um really nice bunch of people on yeah. on all the stalls um and all the talks we're going to do an episode next week of a bit of a deep dive into each of the talks that we went to because um because yeah it's a festival 
you know, there's drinking, there's there was dancing. Um, mm-hmm. there was there was, you know, a lot of eating food and having a good time and, and catching up with people. Um, but actually what what's different again from from sort of a bushcraft type festival is actually there's a lot of education that's going on. Yeah. And each of the talks it's it's actually teaching you stuff and uh so next week we're going to do a bit of a deep dive into all the talks that we we sat in on and what we've learned from each of those um which uh which you know i think i think that'll be a good a good part two good part yeah. two bit of a teaser there for you bit of a a wee little teaser for you yeah i think um we also managed to meet up with some of the extended casual campers podcast family so uh bella lewis chaz chasington chaz chasington um <laughs> thanks for the port down. chaz chasington thanks for the port uh it, yeah so i think that's the thing the the meetup aspect to mm. also catching up with good friends i was surprised at how many people knew each other you know, yeah. it, it did feel like a big family. Um, yeah, yeah. I was going to say community. Come together. But, but everybody I think you're right. seemed to know. Yeah. I think you're right. It felt like a family, didn't it? It's, um, yeah. but actually quite, quite open to include new people in that. And, yeah. uh, you know, the, um, now this, oh man, it's, just, it's fallen out of my head. Um, we spoke to a really, a really cool guy. On the Friday night, um, we went to the cheese cheese and port at Rika, yeah. and uh, and there was a, there was a guy there who lives about five miles away from where we grew up in Sherburn in Elmit up north, and uh, and he on a regular basis um, throws all his, all of his stuff in a backpack, gets the cheapest flight he can get to was it Sweden, yeah, and. Uh, and and then a, a an hour's bus from the airport from Sweden, and he's in the wilderness, and he'll go do that for the weekend. No, I, I didn't him. believe him. I didn't believe how cheap he because he was like, yeah, no, wait until I get a, a thirty five pound. Yeah, he was proper Yorkshire. He was proper Yorkshire. Great. When he was proper proper Yorkshire, go proper on, proper Yorkshire. Um, <laughs> and he was like, yeah, no, it's about thirty quid or something. I was like, shut up, man. And he he uh, he did it there and then. He went and yeah. said, well, look, and he just did it. He said, so I, I get to the airport where I'm going to and then just get a bus or a train out into the wilderness. And because they've got a open kind of policy, you can mm. just go camping go for off. the night. Yeah. yeah. He said sometimes uh, his, uh, uh, taking his kit is a little bit more expensive uh, than the actual plane ticket is, but I didn't realise you could get around the place, you yeah. know, and go to the wilds of Sweden as easy as that. Uh, but he yeah. did it there and then and showed us. It was like, yeah, I think he found a flight for £12.50 or something. Yeah, he did. Like, he did. He did. He <laughs> did. It's like, bloody hell, you're going to get to Sweden for £12.50. You're yeah. going to get a, an hour's bus that will cost you about four quid or something like that, he said. And you literally then, you are in the wilderness and you just walk out. And they've got yeah. they've got a similar system to like Scotland with the bothies. So um, for anyone who doesn't know, Scotland's got little little huts and stone buildings called bothies that you can just stay in. Mm. And uh, and in Sweden they've got a similar sort of system. And and you know if you're the first person there, you know there should be stuff to make a fire and everything else. And if you're last person to leave, well you leave some wood preps and some stuff to light fires in because you don't know if the person that comes next is going to be really cold and mm. need a fire really quickly. So it's a, it's a really, a really cool system. But I thought, wow, that that's a guy who lives where we lived, who is literally, you know, he's, he's getting on a plane and going to Sweden just for a long weekend on a regular yeah. basis. On a just, regular basis. Yeah. yeah. Fab. But then yeah. there was other people who were like, yeah, I, I kind of do bushcraft on my way to work. I'm I'm recognizing weeds in the roads just to keep my plant knowledge up. Yeah, and it's like I'm building it into you every day. So it's like both ends of the scale, and yeah. and and both are really cool as far as I'm concerned. They, I just got really excited by it all all weekend long. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think there was an awful lot of uh, knife makers. 
So people that mm -hmm. uh, were selling knives on behalf of others, people that had made their own knives. You could even make your, your knife there, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, know, you could. Somebody selling blanks that you could do something. There's a forge on the site. Yeah. Um, that was interesting to see. But you can, once again, sort of just if you feel like you, you've got a lack of knowledge in one area, you can sign up to all these things prior mm -hmm. to. So... Um, and, I, and I guess that for me, uh, if any of this is any way interesting uh, for anybody that's listening, uh, one, the ethos is, uh, is, you know, get yourself uh, some better skills. It's keeping those uh, skills alive. Um, yeah. And there is uh, a little magazine called the Bushcraft Magazine. If anybody wants to uh, subscribe to that, uh, go uh, sign up online. I'm sure that they would like a subscription and you get um, some uh, Bushcraft right to your door. Cool. How, yeah. That's a good slogan, Bushcraft right to your door. Bushcraft I like that. Bushcraft right to your door. You need, so. to, uh, you need to copyright that. <laughs> yeah but that, I, um, that kind of goes through some of the things that we've been talking about yeah. but e even without all of that what what a lovely environment just to be at and yeah. just to see and hear stuff that some things i had more of an interest in than others but it, you know, it was just great. And just seeing the amount of skills that you could sign up for and do, um, mm -hmm. you know, from knife sharpening to fire making to, did you see the uh, animal skinning? Yeah, I did. I yeah. did. Did you see the um, the Bronze Age forge with the um, the bellows that the guy was pumping up and down yes, with his hands? Yes, I did. That yes. was cool as anything. That and, really um, was cool. Was it Will Lord? Yes, who, uh, I I stood there for ages watching him uh, flint nap a knife, and and the skills he's got of literally taking what looks like a rock, and and knocking off little bits while he's just chatting. You know, guy's got years of skill. It's just literally chatting away to this crowd around him, and he's knocking all these things off. And before you know it, he's made a nice straight edge, a th a th taken all the depth out of it, and it was just. Bloody hell! You can start to see this this blade, you know, this yeah. cutting edge kind of kind of coming up, and um, and I'd seen him on TV doing stuff with with Ed Stafford in right. uh, in uh, was it First Man Out or Last Man Out or whatever it is. It's um, so it was great to see him him literally in the flesh and using some of those skills that he did on that TV program. It's um, it was a, a just incredible, really uh, really incredible stuff. Quite quite a few famouses there, uh, wasn't there? Famouses, as in famous people, people ah. that we've heard of. Yes, yes, there were. Who had you heard of, Eddie? Uh, Ray Mears, mm. Uncle Lof, Ray to everyone else. Uncle Ray, <laughs> um, who, um, yeah, we just, uh, yeah, keeps. Uh, yeah, this stuff very, very is very serious about um, being being kind of prepared, know your stuff, mm. keeping it alive, getting out there in nature, and um, yeah, it was a real honour to hear him speak. I think, yeah, for me, for me, we, I've, um... I've I've looked at he's got me out camping, and I know he's more further about being you know the the nature, but I've been watching him on telly for. 30 years and uh yeah just uh, i think for he he's probably done more um in my limited sort of scope of things for mm. for me about you know the interest and some of the people i watch on youtube that also reference ray um <laughs> like with first name terms <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I mean he did sign a book for me thank you ray <laughs> <laughs> he cooked he cooked you dinner quite frankly <laughs> That's he made a room put nettles in, in. <laughs> i have to say it tasted really good yeah. We um we did see Ray arrive and uh, we were we were recording not long after again uh, in the field. I think this this was the Sunday, wasn't it? Um, mm. Shall we jump to our second second recorded live in the in the field clip and uh, when we saw Uncle Ray? 
Morning, Aid. It's uh, Sunday morning. Sunday morning at the Bushcraft Show. It's wet overnight. Most of my stuff is uh, um, a little bit damp, but there's blue skies on the horizon and it's looking like a cracking day. Ray Mears has just turned up. We've literally just seen Uncle Ray, as uh, as we like to affectionately call him. He, yeah. uh, We waved. He didn't wave back, but you know. Yeah. I'm going to start the trend. Hashtag up himself. <laughs> Only joking, Ray, if Only you listen. Only joking. <laughs> Only joking. You are literally a god to us. But, you know, you could have waved. You could have waved. You know. Uh, yeah. And, you know, if if we have five minutes uh, with him uh, later, I'd just like to, uh, you know, show him the joys of a blowtorch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I said torch, people, okay. A blowtorch. <laughs> You show whatever joy you want to show him, man. <laughs> Just make sure it's in private. Have you private. seen this? This is Snow Peak also. <laughs> this is Snow Peak. This is my Yeti. <laughs> As he tuts and walks away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bless. We are a little bit excited for uh, for seeing Ray Mears today. Yeah. But, uh, there's loads of other stuff going on. Yesterday was a cracking day, wasn't it? It was oh. scorching hot sunshine all day long. I'm a little bit pink because um, I wasn't expecting it to be quite as warm as it was. And it was awesome. We saw we saw Lofty Wiseman, <laughs> which is just epic. And uh, so I think Lofty is 84, but... Still a bit of a boy, I, I would say. Yeah. He's, uh, he's got a wicked sense of humour, which I suppose anybody that's been in that much danger throughout their lives uh, learns to uh, laugh about stuff. But he, well, he was making jokes upon the uh, yeah, stage. Yeah. And they were good. <laughs> well, he's, he's written, a, not only has he written the survival book, but he's, he's written the um, uh, Who Dares Grins and it's uh, stories, funny stories um, from when he was in the forces yeah. and uh, of of when, you know, the shit's hitting the fan. But you still can find it funny and that gets you through a really difficult time. So he's uh, he's got a cracking sense of humour. Uh, I uh, I could repeat one of his jokes, but I'd just butcher it because I, 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 I don't have the skills to tell jokes. But he was very funny, really yeah. funny man. Uh, really, uh, I'm going to say one that I remembered. So he said uh, the SBS uh, uh, like to uh, uh, think that they invented sex. It wasn't until the SAS came along that uh, they introduced women to the sex. Uh, <laughs> as a much better. <laughs> And shows the rivalry between those two uh, groups. Yes. But, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. A and what proper, a character. A, an absolute definition of legend. Yeah. Uh, you know, just amazing to have just been in the same same arena, really. It's, um, yeah, just brilliant. Absolutely. And we, uh, we started the morning with the Maasai. Yeah, <laughs> that was amazing. Just... <laughs> Just amazing uh, to see firsthand uh, some of their dancing, uh, what the warriors do, the you know jumping tall and what that signifies. Um, and I, I think what an awful lot of this ties into is about keeping those traditional uh, th- ways of life alive. So a lot of what the bushcraft show do is. Uh, work with uh, various trusts and support uh, people uh, over in uh, Kenya, I think it was, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So there was an auction yesterday where they raised thousands with some real kind donations. So yeah. we're I... in a field doing what we want, and it's still, you know, it's it's the ultimate cause of it is to help others as well. Yeah, so. which is lovely. I did put my hand up a few times, but I got outbid every time. It's... Uh... Yeah. There, there were some very generous people people yeah. yesterday. I, um, I what are you doing? That's not Yorkshire ways. I know, I know. <laughs> I, start, I started when the bids were low. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I almost thought, oh, well, sure, willing, but, you know, when it's like, oh, God, that's going to go for much more. Yeah, I'll put £10 up. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, but, you know. Oh, man. It's uh, yeah, they they raised raised loads for for the Maasai yesterday. It was they 
because we had a bit of a one to one, like a small group, and just listening to them talk and and a bit of a Q and A. And they were they were talking about that when when the the men sort of come of age in their teens, they leave their family and they go and live in the bush for anything up to ten years until they they um they're ready to come back and be part of the community. And it's just like that's that's like amazing. They literally and they literally go out and live a a, a bush bushcraft life out in the wilderness and um and then come back when when they're sort of ready to to join the community i i was um just epic really yeah really really epic and and just amazing to be that close um and yeah just just learn a, a little bit more about you know different cultures yeah we did go and buy some uh some stuff from because they've got a stall here again raising money for for themselves so we um we went and bought some stuff off the stall yesterday just just to make sure we can give a little bit back as much as as much as we can it um, uh, there was a the the top thing on the auction yesterday was to go and actually spend two weeks with them in Kenya which was amazing yeah. and would have been amazing but that went for a understandably that went for a lot of money yeah. and and quite rightly so um but way way beyond my league of putting my hand up for anything like that but um yeah. that I'd love to do that love to do that yeah, and I and I think the other good thing was the amount of stalls that there are, Tim. How oh many knives god. and tools? Oh my god! Oh my god! I bought myself a, a steel and a bit of flint, and uh, and was having a go with that myself yesterday afternoon. And it's it's really cool. It's mm-hmm. really really cool. These are toys, and we talk a lot about getting your toys out. Well, blooming it, the bushcraft show has got some toys. Yeah, <laughs> and then um, yeah, so. We also went for a, a little walk um, to see some of the wild men in the woods, oh. men and ladies, I'm sure. But they, um, yeah, some tarp um, and um, tarp camping uh, underneath the wood canopy. It was just a yes. different thing again. So there's something literally for everybody. The, the best thing I saw there, and I did take a little video and we'll, we'll, we'll sort all of these things out on the socials so you can have a look at them. There was a guy who would, it, it clearly lit a fire that he was going to l- sleep on top of because he'd, he'd lit the fire and it was still smoking, but he'd then backfilled it with earth and then had gone and he'd gone round the show and that. And obviously tonight when he comes back, that'll be warm but not too hot so we'll be able to he'll have literally laid on that fire all night long and been and been really warm and i gotta say blow my neck that yeah that is stuff like that that's what i wanted to see coming here i wanted yeah. to see people doing stuff that's way out of my comfort zone as a casual camper yeah but uh yeah just just amazing absolutely amazing yeah yeah what a it it's over delivered um yeah you know much more i was a little bit tentative and i was saying to you yesterday i maybe am a little bit too casual there's a few army people here there's a a, a lot of but there's a lot of friendliness and um although i am casual and we are car campers mm-hmm. um i've enjoyed it so much enjoyed it so much and uh yeah it doesn't matter there's no snobbery or anything it's just no some real friendly people very down to earth and uh the talks the information i've got up this morning and gone and seen something about the uh estonian brothers who were who fought in the uh forests against the germans and then the soviets Oh, uh, that's it, um, it was that's amazing. That's a Daniel Craig movie, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's where they got it from. Um, wow. Nobody else seemed to know it. I was going to stick my hand up and say, "Have you not seen the Daniel Craig movie?" <laughs> <laughs> I knew all about this. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, the you know bushcraft people are not moviegoers. Then maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, it's um, the sun is shining. Actually, the 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 clouds are clearing let's go and hit day three day three an uncle ray doesn't know what's happening (laughs) bring your blowtorch (laughs) yeah i'm still gutted he didn't wave back 
Hello. Hello. I got away from uh, from Lady Chasington. Did you get away from Lady Chasington? I, I did. did. Yeah, <laughs> she knew better than to wave at me. I think uh, she knew... <laughs> you she... heartbreaker. <laughs> Beg your pardon, uh, Lady Chasington. I didn't mean that. I just meant she knew I was the one that probably got everybody drunk and let her, <laughs> let them get in her car. I think I think I think they did their own good job of getting drunk. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, nah, cool. What what a smashing afternoon with uh, some great great people. Yeah. Absolutely. And a cracking weekend overall with some great, really great people. And um and I I feel like personally it's uh it's it's got me on a on a bit of a journey that I'd I'd maybe started many, many years ago and not really taken myself much further down. But actually it's really inspired me to actually look a little bit more deeper into some of this. And actually to pick up some of the books that I've bought over the years and some of the books that I bought at the show and actually do a little bit more reading and get my knowledge up, up to date. And um, and it's just sparked my interest again, which, um, mm, you know, yeah. sparked it not just in fires. Um, uh, uh, hey, see what I did there? See what yeah. I did there? You know, it's almost pro this. <laughs> wow, it was a nice link. Uh, similarly for me, to be honest, I think I, I realised that I like – being in that environment and I would like to feel more uh, competent in certain mm. things. I, you know, I'm still a car camper. Uh, I know I like the finer things in life. I like the gear, but I think what a nice hand in hand thing to just know a little bit more about what some of the people are doing out there that, mm. um, yeah, like you, I've got the books, I've listened to various things, I've watched the TV shows and and in some ways thought, oh, yeah, well, I kind of know how to do that. I've watched Alone. I've watched Uncle Ray on the telly. Um, yeah, he's, on, he's, on, he's only about five years older than me. I'm calling him Uncle Ray. Um, Ray, if you're <laughs> listening, really appreciated everything you said. Uh, please don't really take did. offense. Really did. Because uh, he could I'll, track me down. He literally, he literally could with that limp you've got. <laughs> <laughs> that weird gait. <laughs> Told you I like to think I'm from Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Uh, it's um so we I mean you said before that we we did camp we did camp VIP. We did camp VIP. I um I took the four meter bell with the side a, tables. A beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I think you got more uh, compliments uh, for your your tent than uh, probably lots of other people on the site, to be honest. But I was uh, slightly miffed. Uh, but I also got compliments, but not as many. Yeah, as your I tent, I have but... to say your setup looked more appropriate because you took the swag, um, mm. the the Burke and Wills swag, and. Uh, you had your um, Thornhill ultra heavy tarp over it. You had your kitchen set up and everything. I think your setup looked looked appropriate. It looked really cool. And um, uh, it what what was nice was um, and I said, I said next next week we'll go into some uh, some of the talks with him. But I will just say this one thing that Ray said. He said when he came previously to the show, some of the setups that he he saw when he arrived. We're all a bit of a shambles, he said, but it was great to see this time that actually some of the setups were really tidy and really good and looked great. And actually, I know the road he came in on, and the only setups he saw were ours. So I'm taking that as a win. <laughs> <laughs> we were by the road. Yes. <laughs> he might have been saying it to everybody in a big group audience. He was, I heard it to me. He was only talking about us. He literally he went past your setup, my setup, and then he was in the car park and was parked, and that's where we waved at him. You know, he didn't uh, turn around, but you know, it's yeah. um, I'm I'm taking it that he was saying, yeah, that 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 swag and tarp setups pretty awesome. That bell tent with the stovepipe, yeah. I mean, fair enough. I did put the fairy lights on, but, but Ray's clearly a fan of fairy lights. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he puts those when he's out in the in the Yukon. Well, he he's, he did say keep it simple. <laughs> Which I didn't listen to. I was like, "Ooh, he might not be listening. He might not be talking about mine." Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, we were also at Stanford Hall, so you know, appropriately, we didn't want to uh, uh, show the uh, the landowner up uh, and uh, exactly. You know, yeah. So, but so the it um, was it was it was called cool. the VIP. Um... The VIP camping. There were quite a few people doing VIP. We weren't mm. on top of each other by any means at all. Everybody had a, a decent amount of space. Um, we were perched up slightly nearer the house, and we we were a little bit higher than than others. So we had a cracking view over. I think that side wasn't the lake. I think that was the River Avon. It's was um, it? yeah oh, okay. So the lake was the other side, but between the quiet camping and the standard camping, they had a lake where a lot of water sports and canoeing and stuff was going on. Mm -hmm. equally cool but um and a lot of other people in the vip camped right along the waters the water's edge and um and uh, and and that was really cool we um we had our own showers we had our uh some very nice toilets and um uh, i i have to say i could get used to the vip life well i think that's the thing that does set it out i think uh it's certainly worth uh looking at that and uh, the access to some talks and mm. some other things that came with that. Um, yeah, uh, they sell out every year, so uh, I can understand why, and uh, I'll be uh, looking at that in um, other years. Mm. Um, yeah. But, yeah, you know, absolutely amazing. What a well put together. I can't imagine how much work went into that. God. They must be exhausted. They, they must, must literally. Be. I mean, let's let's shout out uh, David Thompson, Jack Lindley, and Kerry Tilson, who were visible throughout the whole thing. Um, what with great chatting, hosts of the show! What engaging. great engaging. Uh, they were hosts. They were they were in amongst everybody, talking to everybody, and um, which is really lovely to see because very, very most, present. Yeah, very yeah, present. Most festivals really, and things, throughout the, the day. The, Organizers are distance. You you don't see any of them, and and if you do see them, kind of going through, well, you can't go anywhere near them. Yeah, not at all. They all three of those were were very present and very much part of the event. Yeah, and um and hats off to them for putting on such a cracking cracking weekend. Uh, for, for a big event, that smell felt very. I think that's the thing why it felt you know really just beautiful and uh friendly and you know i think that um, uh, that comes right down from yeah. the organizers so yeah had uh, had a real her, a real sort of intimacy really you know yeah and for for you know a load of um bushcrafty people you wouldn't imagine that we'd use the word intimate but actually you know it wasn't all blokes you know again that that might be something that people might think it it, it would all be a bunch of but absolutely not i'd say it was no. a, a good a good 50 50 split and a ton of kids thrown in and a load of dogs because it's the only festival i've ever gone to where you can take your dogs yeah. um and uh and and it, there was a real intimacy in the in the whole thing so um so yeah i what more can we say I've got a I've got a minute mindfulness I recorded on the uh, on the Sunday morning when there was a little bit of um, a little bit of rain on my well, tent. I have to say, Tim, I don't need it because I'm still very much at the Bushcraft Show and Stanford cool. Hall. But okay. I think our listeners uh, uh, might appreciate it. Cool. Well, we'll go to a minute mindfulness and uh, and we got a couple more things to say. So don't leave us. Uh, we'll be right back after this. Welcome to the Casual Camping One Minute Mindfulness. Let the sounds of the outdoors take you back to the camping field.
Ah, fab. I love, I love, um, I love actually recording some of these live. It's because um, yeah. I know some of some of them. You know, if we've not been out, I, I, I grab them from from stock in in certain places. But um, it is really lovely when you can record. You know, a bit of minute mindfulness because it absolutely drops me straight back into where I was when I recorded it. Mm. It's um, I, uh, I, I love it. I love it. Um, I, I, I suppose really it's it's just it's all i all i really want to say um is some thank yous um to to some great people who uh who either spoke or we spoke to or helped us out over the weekend um or facilitated us in in attending so so again i want to say thank you to david thompson to to jack lindley and to kerry tilson i want to say um Thank you very much to David McRae, who spoke on the on the Monday morning, and we'll talk about him next week. But he um, he really he really struck a bone with me and struck a chord, hit a bone, chord, hit a bone. It's a bush. Craft. He didn't bone me. <laughs> <laughs> he could <laughs> probably could. He's probably got a boning knife on him right now, <laughs> and we've just lost the thanks uh, and the gesture there. <laughs> It was like next time, don't thank me, okay? If you're gonna say that, <laughs> oh man! Um, but yeah, David McRae, he he really struck a chord with me. There we go. Um, as did Jason Ingemels. Um, that that we'll talk about that next week. That was an incredible talk. Ray Mears was brilliant. Uh, we got to see him speak twice, and we'll tell you about that next week. Um, Lofty Wiseman was just epic. You know, the guy's a legend. Um, thank you to what, all of those what people. Funny, what a funny guy. I didn't expect funny him to guy. be so... He's a funny uh, guy. He's a, he's funny, a funny guy. guy. <laughs> How do I make you funny? It's, um, <laughs> Curtis and Rich for teaching us some new skills and being so giving in yeah. uh, in that knowledge. Yeah, really and, uh, and of course, guys. We, can't, um, we can't finish the episode without saying thank you very much to Richard Marples who um who led us round who got us there in the first place um got us a decent camping spot always always a winner in my books and yeah. um introduced us to an awful lot of incredible people and it wouldn't have been the weekend we had had he uh, had he not uh, been been there with us so big thank you to to richard yeah thank you richard um we i think are uh quite changed by it in a yeah. very good way, in a very good way. So yeah. uh, thanks for uh, extending our journey of what we might sort of look into. But we're still very much casual campers. We yep. enjoy the finer things of life. We like gear. We'll be talking more about those things. We'll also be uh, popping in some interviews uh, over the coming weeks from various people. So mm -hmm. so next week um, you'll get a part two of this. So tune in next week where we'll do a bit of a deep dive into the talks that we attended at the Bushcraft show and some of the stuff that we learned from those and why we're a bit changed. And um and then let's let's see where we let's see where we go. You're a what bit you... changed. You're a bit changed. I'm a bit tapped. <laughs> You've changed him. You've changed. <laughs> I've I've changed into into my casual wear. <laughs> yes. The other shout out to him uh that I think we forgot to do was for that beautiful, beautiful um, beef jerky that we had. Oh, the legendary paleo beef jerky. That was piri a local. Piri. Oh, Piri Piri. I like the Piri Piri. Well, I, li I like them both, but uh, we were with our friends um, mm. who met us at the show who hadn't tasted beef jerky before and were all like, oh, that's really nice. Yeah, uh, which it's the nicest beef jerky I've had. They do other things, but he was such a nice guy that was just going around uh, uh, giving out some samples. Yeah, we just bumped into him, and um, and it's got a white rose of Yorkshire on it. So uh, you know, is a is a small guy working hard from Yorkshire. We're going to give you a shout out because genuinely, it was bloody lovely. Well, you you brought it back. 
And I was like, I've got to go find his stall because that was lovely. The Piri Piri mm. one, I, I was just really, really nice. Not too hot. It was just beautiful. And um, you said he didn't have a stall. He was just there giving out free samples to promote just, himself. Just so. walking around. Said he, he plans to do a stall there next year. Yeah. which I think is pretty cool because yeah. he also wants to bring some equipment to show people how to do it, um, <gasps> which I think, how cool is that? You can learn how to make your own beef jerky. Yeah. Something else you can learn at the Bushcraft Show. So um, so um, shout out to the legendary paleo beef jerky. Fab. Absolutely brilliant. Take care, everybody. Bye.